All right, everyone, welcome back to Creative Survival. Today's guest, we have Tasha Glover. She is an entrepreneur, business owner, creative, mentor. I mean, this this lady wears so many hats. It is unbelievable. Not only does she run her business tech with Tasha, where she gets to oversee creatives and be creative within that process, but she also gets to mentor people. She she gets to do so much. So Tasha, I just want to thank you so much for being here. Um, I'll, I'll toss it to you because you know yourself better <laughs> in what you do. So just kind of just fill the audience in is just a little bit of what you do in the creative space. Hey, hey, thanks for having me, Craig. I'm excited to be here. And I'm telling you, I think you did a really good job of um, introducing me because I think every time I'm not one of those people who who has this like spill and I'm, you know, I'm Tasha, the blah, 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 the blah, blah. It changes all the time. <laughs> um, but I guess the, the basis, the, the, the most important thing is I am, um, you know, the focus is being led by God. And, and my whole thing sometimes I, I say is, um, I don't want to put a label on myself because however God equips me and gives me authority to operate. That's where I am. Um, but as of now in this season, I am um, able, like you said, to oversee um, a spirit led uh, branding and digital marketing company um, called Tech with Tasha. So we help um, startups. We help um, what I call people that are kind of in the shift. And, you know, you have this amazing idea, but you don't really know how to articulate it and so we come and help you do that um, with branding we help you do that with creating a platform um, that you're called to be on and we'll, we do that with helping you um, get that product service or brand out to the people who need what you offer so <laughs> that's awesome so what has your journey been like with creativity have you always had a healthy relationship with within your creative journey and finding your voice or is that something that you've had to kind of walk through and kind of journey through to kind of get to where you're at now? Um, it's been, it, you know, and it's, it's interesting because when we talk about the creativity process, we have to go so far back, right? And so I was one of those people, especially growing up, um, that I was always after kind of what was new and something different. Um, I dabbled in poetry for a little bit. Um, I thought I probably wanted to be a rapper at one point. Um, <laughs> I, um, I tried my hand at, uh, at drawing when I was younger, um, but I didn't think I was the best. And I think I kind of struggled in the beginning with, um, and, and we kind of all do right with, um, with if we're not the best, especially when we're in a peer group, then we're not, that's not our thing. Um, but as I, you know, kind of made, made ch wrong choices or learned and grew up, um, you know, I've, I've become, um, more comfortable with who I am and how God designed me. Um, and like that authenticity and that originality is at the core of everything that I do in my life, whether it be in my relationship with my children, how I teach my children, how I communicate with um, my husband, our relationship. So, yeah, it's been definitely a journey. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to be when I grow up. Um, but I I am very comfortable, not, not the comfortable is not the word, but I'm um excited about how I get to show up um, in these different areas of my life. That's nice. Um, going back to where you said you didn't think you were the best, because I've talked about this on a couple other uh, interviews where a lot of the times we can get in that comparison trap, especially mm -hmm. as artists. Um, mm -hmm. For you, especially in that time, like what did you consider the best? Because there's so many different styles of drawing and art and composition for you what what were you kind of comparing yourself to and how did that kind of affect you going through that um I think I can compare myself based on what I thought was excellent or what I thought was good um you know especially learning you know whether whether it's learning different um creative styles with uh with with graphic design, um, whether it's, you know, building frameworks out for a website and I see, um, what other people, you know, did and 
and kind of focusing on, oh, well, I like that, so I'll try that. But what I found out and what works for me, but it takes longer, it takes so much longer to be original, right? (laughs) (laughs) Then it takes to see something that captures your eye and then try to recreate it or make it better. And that's what we learn a lot, right? In the world, it's like, oh, you take something, you recreate it. Or the whole myth that I can talk forever about is that um, this whole thing about how uh, pioneers get arrows in their back. Have you ever heard that? Um, that that whole thing comes from an era of not flowing in originality, but being safe and walking in territory that's already been charted so that you don't get an arrow in your back. <laughs> so then as when you kind of step forward, especially with branding and logo design and mm-hmm. all of that, how do you kind of stay or how do you like keep the arrows at bay as you continue to go forward in originality? Is to... I think it's more more a mindset, um, and then it's having patience because um, if if I'm always kind of looking over the fence or sampling something, then I won't I can't get into that whole whole uh, creative space. You know, sometimes to get in that creative space, you have to have to kind of be um, off from others, right? You know, I, and I imagine, now I'm not really a songwriter. I have wrought, I have written potty songs. I don't know if that counts, but um, <laughs> so it's just like when you're, when you're writing, um, either, even when you're sampling music, mm-hmm. I'm not sampling music, but you're creating music. Like you don't want to hear it because you don't want to get the idea from somebody else. Like you want your own original idea. So it's like that. And so it's like, um, and I have a team that I work with and I, and it's so much easier to have someone who you can say, what do you think about this? Instead of like going to Google or going to somebody else who did something, because again, in order to stay in that space of authenticity and originality, you kind of have to be focused on being okay with um, what you produce and what comes um, from you, right? And what flows out other than um, being, um, sampling other other people's stuff. And so, um, and I know the process is different from everybody else, um, but how I work now is because I have a team will come together and it, it becomes easier because we trust in each other to be able to deliver this really awesome thing. If someone was watching right now and, they're like, oh, that sounds like a great process, but I am kind of just running solo at the moment. Yeah. Um, is there any anything that you would recommend for them to do to be able to kind of find that tribe to be able to bounce things off of, even if they aren't fully collaborating on a project together? Yeah, so community is super important. So whether um, you have a community of people who enjoy the same thing. So if you're if you're a writer, um, then a community of writers. But it's important to be sure that um, you connect to the to to people who aren't um, competitive, because when you're around people who are competitive and they're in the same space as you, then there's they they won't be truly open, right? And you can't really throw your ideas out because people are you know afraid of other people taking their ideas, so to speak. Um, So it doesn't always have to be someone who is in the same space as you. You know, it could be someone in a totally different industry, um, but they're they're wise, right? Um, And so you can throw an idea to them and they can give you your opinion. Um, But even so, like individually, it's so important to be to trust kind of trust our own in- instincts and trust our own flows um and then when we ask someone else if they don't agree then if you know that you have like this product is something that um is from the depths of your soul or is something that you you truly sat and took the time on it sometimes it doesn't even matter um but so there's that you know um you know there's kind of the gray area of it's, it's great to have someone who you trust or someone you can bring in for counsel, um, you know, when it comes to creative process, but it's, it's always great to have that mindset of being kind of in tune with what you're doing and what you're creating. And, um, you know, you can, you can set your, your atmosphere for whatever that means to you. You know, some people it's music and you get, you got the music going, you're able to get into this place where you can try to just flow. Right. 
Um, for others, it may be nature or, you know, some others, it may be, you know, gardening. I know some people who, um, when they're out in the garden, it just really opens something up. But we all have those kind of triggers or those, um, you know, those things that um, kind of help us get in more of, in tune with who we are so that we can just, just flow out with what's in us. So when it comes to client work, especially working in originality and then you know, bring like anytime anyone who expresses themselves creatively, it it is a part of you, right? Like you're yes. literally like putting yes. yourself out of like a piece of you being like, all right, now you get to judge this. Yep. Um, and uh, for the audience, I went through Tech with Tasha to do rebranding for my video production company and logo and friggin' stellar work. But when you get clients like myself or like even like other people who like, how do you do that? Like, you create something, you throw it out for them to judge, and then they come back, like, I don't even know how to describe it. Like, how do you, how do you, how do you deal with that and then continue to work in originality without hurt feelings? Oh, that is such a good question. Um, it is every time um, we create the first thing before we hit the submit, it is like this. Um, <laughs> and, it, and it is, but... Um, what, what I understand is that it's not my thing. You know, some people take that on so personally. And so I'm co it's like, we're co-creating, you know, together. And so, um, you know, my team, we have to be okay with, we thought this was amazing. <laughs> and I tell people sometimes, no, sometimes we get it on right on the first try, but it does not happen all the time. And when you have clients like Craig, you know, <laughs> they, they know exactly how to, you know, such when you, when you're up against someone, and I, I love how you think, Craig. Like I love how you think, and um, I love how you express how you think. And it, you, you were such a, a great client to work with. Um, but you were particular. Let's be honest. You were like, nope, I want this curve like this at a at a twenty degree angle. <laughs> so it's um, you know being being proud of what you're doing, but holding it loosely when you're co creating with someone. Um, and also, um, this this may sound crazy, but I was dealing with someone um, where. I, I don't know if we were doing branding, what we were doing. Um, we were on a phase of work and she came to me and she says, I am not happy with this. <laughs> she was not happy with it. Um, and it, it, it kind of shook me a little bit. And, you know, I spent time with that and, you know, I just felt like the Lord was, he, he just spoke to me and he let me know you're not responsible for her happiness. Like it's her choice, whether she's happy or sad or not. Like, I'm not trying to make you sad. I'm just trying to get a product out that, um, that you asked for. Now it can be an amazing product, but whether you choose to be happy or sad, ecstatic, like I'm not, it's, I'm not in control of those emotions. And so, um, just knowing like where to, um, um, not take, you know, feedback, you know, or what people say, um, to heart, because that can affect your creativity for sure. You know, you can creating from a space where you're angry or creating from a space where you're like, not wanting to deal with a person. Uh, we know that when we go and get our food, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good idea. Um, but being able to, um, work, work in, you know, in co-creation with someone is not easy. Um, but when you're called to it and that's like with our agency, we're definitely called to what we do. Then we have the grace to, to, to hang on right to the end because we're, we're confident in what we create and, and we understand, you know, what it takes to work with other people. I like, I like the phrase co-creation and instead of collaboration, cause you are really creating something with yeah. the person hiring you. It's, it's, yeah. It's an interesting way to look at it, and it's definitely important to highlight communication, right? Because creatively, we all, I mean, everyone already speaks differently. Like, right. They communicate in different ways. So one, one thing yep. I might say to someone might hurt someone else's feelings. Exactly. And when it comes to, like, co-creating or making something for a client, you're like, oh, I nailed it. This is it. And then they yeah. come back and say, I'm not happy with it. It's really easy to be like, well, up yours. <laughs> <laughs> 
I would tell you, like, you're not happy. What? Right? But to them, that's how they express, well, something's off. And then you have to be able to come back and be like, okay, well, then what didn't make you what you call happy? Like, yeah. What, <laughs> uh, yeah. Otherwise, you can go into a complete spiral. <laughs> yes. I'm telling you. And, you know, you said something because um, how we communicate, right? And, and you know, I'm sure this, you know, um, your YouTube channel will reach more than the United States. And um, I'm sure you probably work with people outside of the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had to find that out, too. It's like working, you know, my, my first client was in Australia. Then I got a client in New Zealand. Then I got a client in the UK. Then I got, you know, clients from different parts of the world. And the way they communicate or the way they um, respond to what you set as boundaries <laughs> can be all over the place and so you have to you know when you open up to dealing with people from everywhere you have to make sure that um you could you communicate or understand how they communicate so that you don't take it the wrong way yeah because culturally too we speak different yeah. um but it, and again that's all part of that creative discovery process mm-hmm. um when you talked about having grace to get by what do you mean when you work and have like the grace to be able to work with creativity and with clients? Um, what I mean by that is um, work, understanding that this is something that you're called to do. And so it, it's kind of, it's kind of um, I can say kind of twofold, right? So working in that grace of what you're doing help helps you when you're kind of just over it. I can say, right. Um, meaning that you get to the place where you're like, okay, I know that I'm called to do this, but this is not working out for me. Right. Like, you know, you have those days where you're just like, okay, um, did I hear right? Am I sure this is what I'm supposed to be doing? And, and still going back to knowing that, okay, yes, you know, um, in those times where you, you feel like in your own strength that you can't, you can't work something or you can't, um, you know, for instance, say if we're talking about with branding, like you're, you're, you're on your fourth revision, you're supposed to only do three. (laughs) Right. And you're like, um, I'm pulled from my reservoirs, you know, and the grace comes in to like, give you, um, you know, more energy or more creativity for you to actually, you know, work out what you're supposed to do. Um, And then on the other end with that grace, the same thing um, you can work, you know, you're, you're working inside of what you know you're supposed to be doing. Um, And even though you are doing, um, you know, uh, you're continuously doing this work, the grace keeps you, from burning out. It keeps you from um, um, uh, running out of ideas, right? It keeps you, um, you know, in that that realm of newness and freshness, you know, especially uh, as it speaks to creatives. So, you know, always having um, more than what you thought you needed. How do you, because you said being called to, what would you say is the difference between this is what I, like, I really want to do this. I'm just going for it versus, oh, this is actually where I should be. And this is where I'm being called to work. Does that make sense? Yep. It does make sense. And I think that's one of the biggest struggles. Um, It's something that, um, that I, you know, I struggle with for like the longest time from like, what do you want to be when you grow up to like take this personality quiz and find out who you are and what you're supposed to do, you know, take it, take this career <laughs> quiz and, and find out what career you're supposed to have in your life, you know? Uh-huh. So, um, it's everywhere. And I, I think it all boils down to, um, not so much what you, what your, it, it doesn't even have to be what you're great at. Right. But it's where, um, you were sometimes it's just it's it's where you end up it's where you're your um you you have the authority at it's hard to explain but it's like um going about you know a job like you know I can use myself for for an example um I before I started my own business I was working in corporate and I've left left different jobs and went to a job and I'll be like excited the first like 
three months when I'm doing something new and when I'm learning new systems and when I'm learning. And then all of a sudden it'll be like, I'm something, it has to be something else. Like, you know, there's this, this burning passion in you that you're just not where you're supposed to be. It's, I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain, but um, it's, it's kind of like a knowing that, um, or, or you're kind of unfulfilled and you don't understand exactly what it is, but then, you know, because God is who he is, he's so good. He gives us an opportunity to usher us where we're supposed to be. And even if we haven't even thought that we could, could do that once we're there, like we know, like, because it's a fulfillment that we can't even explain. It's like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm <laughs> That's with me. I'm like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm supposed to be here. And so, and then God would just kind of orchestrate to you exactly what it is that, um, um, what your next level is or what your next step is. Um, but you, you no longer have that, okay, I'm not where I'm supposed to be kind of inner knowing thing. It's like, oh, there's more, you know, it's, it's something, it's something more for me. I know this isn't, isn't it, even though it's great. And that more doesn't even have to be like, okay, now, uh, you know, I'm making six figures now, but I need to make seven figures. It has, it has nothing to do with uh, monetary value, but it has um, everything to do with um, just knowing that you're at a place where you're like, you fit, you're in a place where you fit um, and you probably don't even know everything you're supposed to be doing, but you know, but you don't have this inner growing for something else anymore. From someone on the outside looking in, when they, like, you know, that stirring, you just know, like you're saying, um, what did, for you, what did that look like walking that out? Like, you knew there was something greater that you were supposed to be doing than what you were doing. Not saying mm -hmm. office work is bad. I'm just saying for you personally, yeah, yeah. you just felt like you should be doing something else. Um, for you with your own walk with God, how did that work out for you? And then how does, how does your relationship with God walking that out affect your creativity? Um, for, for me walking that out, um, and I hope we can go in this area, but it happened in understanding what God wasn't. Um, because I had, you know, I wasn't raised in the church and so, um, like now that I look back, I know this, but growing up, I just had kind of had this freedom because like my, my mother wasn't, she didn't make me go to church. You know, I would go to church with like neighbors. This was in Wisconsin. Wisconsin is not the Bible belt. Okay. So I'm in <laughs> Mississippi now, which is like the Bible belt, belt, totally different culture. So I knew this freedom growing up, freedom to choose that sort of thing. Um, but then when um, I came to Mississippi, which I've been here about 15 years, um, and I promised myself that I would not go to church. <laughs> I don't. I had to say I was a little, little rebel. I was like, when I get to Mississippi, because I know it's like the Bible, I was like, I'm not sitting in anybody's church. Um, and so that didn't happen. Like it lasted like two years, I think. And then like by year three, I was in somebody's church. Um, but so that whole journey of going through this, like learning who God was and then learning who God wasn't helped unleash for me, um, knowing where I was supposed to be, um, in my relationship with who I was. So it kind of boiled down to identity, um, because from going from this freedom growing up to not, you know, being like forced to do certain, certain things and not having a, you know, tradition, um, mindset around religion where I have to do this and I have to do that to now being being an adult and making the decision to immerse myself into a church culture where it was don't do this don't do that you can't wear that you can't you know then I like my creativity was gone like I was stuck I, I didn't realize that until I got out of it but it's like I lost my identity I lost who I was I wasn't able to um, make these decisions and, and, and know what was what, because I was just kind of falling in line with what I thought that God wanted me to do based on how everybody else looked. So, um, I know that's a whole nother story, but <laughs> once I came through that, um, and honestly, it's been, um, the last maybe three and a half years, a journey of unlearning 
and then relearning who God is, like the whole world opened up. Wow. Yeah. So for you, I like, I like learning not only who God was, but who God wasn't. So Mm -hmm. for you, who, how did you have to learn what he wasn't for you? Ooh, I had to learn that, um, God wasn't, he wasn't a Sunday only God, you know, he wasn't a let's pretend that everything is great. Um, because I go to church, God, he wasn't, um, listen, you know, um, your, your pastor is, you know, the ultimate authority over what you should do, God. Um, he wasn't a you can't wear jewelry and only skirts kind of God. <laughs> when I tell you, I'm talking about in there. I was like in there. And I don't know. I guess it was kind of like a comfort for me because I was away from home and in, in this new place. And I was like, I knew God was calling me, but he wasn't calling me to like lose who I was or not understand him. And so um, I was I was comfortable with people thinking that I was, I had a relationship with God, but I, I, I had a relationship with the church. I didn't have a relationship with God. And so, um, I had to learn how to lay the church down (laughs) (laughs) and, um, and, and God began to teach me as I began to learn who he was, I be learn I began to learn who I was and who he called me, um, you know, who he called me to serve, like what my purpose or a little, a little piece of it, you know, in this season, even, you know, cause we'll be continuously going, you know, uh, on le- from level to level. But I mean, it was, it was hard. It was hard. And, you know, I did a lot of like, you know, you go from a, like a season of like, where you're upset, like almost to like pissed off mad. Can I say that word? Yeah. Um, to, how did I allow myself to get here to like, okay, God, thank you for showing me that and uncovering that and, and like helping me to um, understand who you are in my life and um, learning to love. That was a big thing. Like learning to love everyone, you know, Mm -hmm. not so love the world, but I didn't, somehow I missed that. Like over the last however many years, I was just kind of, like loving the people who are in my community, in my church and judging the people who are in the world, but I wasn't loving the world. And so um, it's amazing how God did that because he didn't even allow me to like build this business um, until I understood how to love and how to reach people. Because um, I, in, in my business, I work with different people. You know, mm-hmm. my, my voice and my audience is to kingdom entrepreneurs, but I work with just about who was ever attracted to, you know, to my work. So, but it's, it's been, it's been a journey and still yet going. I would love to know. Cause usually when people hear like church and all that, like usually that's like, Oh, you go to church and you find God, right. Or you go to church and you find this like revelation of new life for you. Like, cause you said you had to lay down church and find God what mm-hmm. what did te- like what does that mean as someone like if i was on the outside looking in like i didn't grow up in church or i haven't really been to too many church services because let's face it church people are bonkers uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh i'm you know i could be one of those all the time uh so for you what did that look like being able to separate church as like an institution and building uh, and like the people in it versus like an actual relationship with God. Um, oh, it has so many different layers to that. Um, but one of the, one of the main, uh, well, one of the first things for me, um, which was around identity is taking off the layer of the part of the church that said what I wasn't before I joined the church. Mm. Um, And so for me, it was like, oh, now, you know, coming to this community of believers and it's like, now you're saving. God loves you. I was like, well, what happened to this is at 23. Right. So I'm like, I thought he was already loving me like before then, you know, not so much of that. But it's like now your sins are washed away. I was like, I've been baptized like eight times. Like I've been 
sprinkled. I've been just, like, you know, like I didn't grow up in church, remember? So we just went to church. We went to the Catholic church. We went to the Methodist church. We went to like, I didn't even know what denomination I was when I was younger. They were like, what are you? I'm like, like, what do you mean? And so um, I, <laughs> I had to, to take those layers off of the the church telling me what I wasn't before I came into their denomination. Oh, now your sins are forgiven you. Or now, you know, because you speak in tongues, like God is going to bless your life. Or now because, you know, you're, you're this, that this happened. And I was like, so I had to like, not see God's hand on my life, like before that time. And I'm like, but wait a minute, but God was, when I was younger, he protected me here. And the whole point of why I'm even in the state is because of God, but he wasn't talking to me because I was sinning and now he loves me and everything's going to be great. And that wasn't the case. And so <laughs> I was like, what? And like all kind of stuff was breaking out of my life, but I was like, I'm supposed to be safe now. Like what's going on? You know? And so, um, I had to, to go back and, reclaim my past because you know according to and I'm not saying all, all churches like this is just my experience but according to now me coming to this faith and being part of this denomination where everybody loves each other inside of the church and we all do community but everybody outside is out there it was like you know my relationship with my mom was was like almost gone my relationship with my 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 sister and my um, her, you know, my my mother in law and all these people who weren't in the same church that we were in was just like fading away, and so I had to reclaim all that, and I had to learn how to love them and not to judge them, and um, how to find myself because I lost myself. Like I was buried under like layers of clothing and of skirts down to my toes. Like it was, it was what it looked like physically, but it was it was even worse spiritually. And so um, that that took a that that took some some taking off some stuff and <laughs> and learning how to hear God for for myself and learning and interpreting scripture based on the revelation that I received, not based on what somebody else told me that it meant. And so, man, when like when the scales fell off, I was like, this is freedom. Like this is life, you know, but I didn't have that when I didn't understand, um, intimacy with God and relationship in him. And then God just began to bless me and put me in, in areas where other people needed to authentic love and genuine love. And, you know, I began to build my businesses. I began to mentor and I began, um, you know, to, to, to have a community of people who understand how to love other people. So that's awesome. One thing I feel like I need to highlight too is, um, cause a ch like church by definition of the root word is just a gathering of people. Yes. It's not four walls, which drives right. me bonkers. Um, <laughs> but we're all like all, everyone, whether whatever faith or belief or non-belief you have, like we're all imperfect people. We all mess yeah. up. We all like, and so when you get a bunch of imperfect people into a building, <laughs> like they'll do imperfect things. So I think it's like one thing I saw too, cause like for you, you said like, as you went into that, you felt your identity stripped. And I think too, a lot of times, whether you're in church or not, I think whatever community you're around can strip your identity yes. away yes. unless you yes. have like something core to hold on to, which is the truth of who you are and your yep. value. Yes. And I think that all stems from relationship, people, God, everything. Like it's all from authentic relationship. Yep. Um, and so for you, like if someone, if someone's watching this and like they might be getting like a little, <laughs> like a little uncomfortable or maybe that it's like this like insight, like if they were stuck in that, like they just feel hollow or you just, you just feel kind of like that, like half self, um, mm -hmm. what would you like say to them? Cause what was your like kind of sparking point to be able to be like, Oh, okay. Like I'm going to start journeying this way to kind of move into a relationship 
Like how, how would you recommend them to be able to start that journey? So the one thing that we did and it, it came like, there were so many different signs, right. But it came, it came on purpose, but by accident. And it's, it's real simple. I'm, here it is. It's real simple. It is spend time only around those who genuinely love you. Um, it's something about being involved in, whether it's community in church or a, any any toxic community. And I'm not saying all churches are toxic, mm -hmm. but if you're in a toxic community, the best thing that you can do to begin to bring even clarity to your mind is to remove yourself. Time, removing yourself actually opens up your clarity opens up your mind. Um, you're not going through, you know, the formality or the motions of what this community um, brings. And you have time to really see things that you couldn't see when you were in that toxic community. And so that's the simple, that's what helped. That's what worked for us. We actually removed ourselves. Um, and it wasn't even on purpose. It was just like something happened. And then we just spent like a week away. And when that week we were like, wait a minute, what about this? Like things start, things, things start like connecting, like dots start connecting. Like it was amazing. It's, it's, it's like being in a place where it's like, think of you being in like this place where everybody is and there's like toxic fumes, but you're there so much. You don't smell it. You don't see it. You know, it's like clogging your brain. It's not allowing you to be up 100%. And then for some reason, you remove yourself out of that for, you know, three days, five days, a week, two weeks. And all of a sudden you're like, wow, wait a minute. I can smell differently now. What's going on? <laughs> so it's something like that. And I know that's a, you know, a, um, kind of funny illustration. But it, the simple answer for us was basically to remove yourself. That's really good. It's, all, it's almost like a... It's almost like a like diet or exercise. Oh, right? I'm telling you, that's exactly what it's like, Craig. Exactly what you're gonna have some withdrawals at first. <laughs> Don't go back. Give your body time to readjust to how it's supposed to um, respond. You know, because and you know we've been talking about this, Craig, because um, me and my husband have uh, stopped the refined sugar, right? Uh -huh. So the first week was torture. It was like, no, I need my sugar. And then now, you know, in, in, in sugar and wheat, let's just say gluten, right? And so um, the other day, my husband brought something and um, something from work that they cooked. And I ate it. And within like 30 minutes, I had a tummy ache. I was like, oh, it was something in that. You know, because now I'm sensitive to what it was before that was basically killing me. Um, but once I removed it, now I'm not, not, my body is responding like it's supposed, <laughs> supposed to, right? And I would say for anyone too watching this, like if you like, cause I can just picture someone in the frame of mind of like, what, like they're my friends or it's my family oh. or, you know, it's, it's my church or it's my like creative group. Like it doesn't have to be in church, like nope. any group outside anywhere. And like, uh, like if you want to step away, don't, don't be one of the weirdos who just like, you just vanish and you like dodge everyone's calls and like, <laughs> like you don't have to like just straight off vanish off the face of the earth. But like, you can even tell like your family members or your friends, which I've had to do with certain circles of influence where I'm like, guys, like I'm going through something and I just need to figure some stuff out. So I might, yeah. you know, I'm not going to be as in communication as much but i'll reach out once i kind of go through it and like you like it gives you that room to be able to step away it does and it kind of helps with that fear of like oh because it's true like just like with anything like you get that comfortable feeling like or that addiction like i need my sugar i need yep. it but you don't need it <laughs> like once yep. it's gone and it's out there's this it's it's refreshing yes so yeah, if you have that like gut fear, just know that there's ways to communicate that and to be able to safely step away. Right. Yep. So then for you walking in this, as you were able to find yourself more in, in your identity while seeking out like an authentic relationship with God, uh, one, what is what does that look like for you? Like being authentic and relational with God 
<clears throat> versus what most people see is like the four walls saying raise your hand Sunday and then, you know, Monday through Saturday, you do whatever you want. How did that work out for you? And then what, like, what did that bring out for you? Not only in identity, but also in your creative voice. Um, learning how who I am is the same every day of the week. Um, because as you know, before it was like, this is who I am when I'm at work. This is who I am when I'm at church. This is who I am when I'm with my friends. And this is who I am when I, you know, you, you have all, you have these multiple personalities and you're not able to truly, um, be who you are. Cause one, you don't know who you are. Um, and you don't see how life is is connected and combined into one because you're so busy. You're so busy, like being a chameleon into all these different communities or all these different circles that you have. And so how that was for me was now I like, this is who you get. This Tasha now is who you get at a business meeting is who you get at church. You know, it's who you get. I am myself that, and that's what I, authenticity is it's knowing who you are and your identity does not change based on uh, your community it doesn't and so as I begin to understand that God is who God is you know he, he's never changing he's always the same and so I can invite him into my life every day and I begin to do that you know um, I can love I, you know, I don't have to look at people and judge them and not be open because I'm cutting off, you know, it, however God will have me to serve. And then I, I found out that God actually called me to the marketplace, like not saying that I may not have an opportunity where I'm in, you know, four walls of, of a church or an organization, you know, sharing, you know, the wisdom that God's put into me. But even now, the opportunities that I have to share is just like this. It's, you know, it's in the marketplace. It's in the real world. It's not behind a pulpit. And and that is free in, in itself. It's in my work. It's in, you know, when I get to mentor. Um, I've had all types of amazing experiences with people I don't know that, you know, have reached out to me, you know, not only just for, for help with business, but like, you know, the way you show up and how you pour out and the wisdom that comes from your lips, they're like, how do you do that? Like, what is going on? They want to know how. And it's in truly showing up as who you are and not who others want you to be. And that spills over through every area of your life um, according to what what we were designed to be. You know, they're, they're, it's, it's one. It's, it's united. It's not um, Tasha at the church and Tasha at the work and Tasha with her kids. You know, um, of course, you know, we don't have the same conversations <laughs> possibly, but we are who we are. You know, we, we should be chameleons. And I, and I was for a, a while and it was, it's a lot of work, <laughs> it's a lot of energy. It is so much work to try to fit into everywhere and be someone different for each place rather than just being who you are. Yes. Not to say that, like, anyone watching, they're like, well, <laughs> most people say I'm a jerk, but they must all be wrong. <laughs> a little bit of a difference, but, <laughs> um, man, this has been good. I could easily make this, like, a three-hour episode. <laughs> oh, I know. It's like, I, you didn't know I had so much to say. I'm like, you want to talk about what? Misconception of the church. Do you know who you're talking to? <laughs> um, I would, because I know we're reaching the, the end I want to respect your time. So I would love to just, like, as we close out, is there any kind of last bits of, like, wisdom, advice, or tools you'd like to throw out to the audience? Yeah, I would, um, especially since we're talking to an audience of creatives, um, I one, one of the things that I know God has mandated me to do, which I have no idea why, but Lord, you know more than I do, <laughs> is, which is why I love this um, topic, is to... Um, is to to remind people that you have something that only you can do that is needed now. 
and don't let anybody taint it. Like, don't let anyone um, buy their opinions, um, throw you off of your creativity, operating in your originality, operating in authenticity and creating the new. There's so much already in the world being copied and redone that it's like the earth is like groaning for new stuff. You know, um, you know, when you think about inventions, you know, back in, you know, um, you know, the, the Einsteins and, you know, those who were, um, you know, ahead of their time and they were helping us to develop now, like we need those now, like, you know, and, and it, it may seem so small, but um, just flowing from the space that only you can flow is so important. And even if it takes time, because creating from a place of originality takes longer it takes time and it's okay if you don't know the next but if you can just sit with whatever you feel that's on the inside of you until you um get it out then i would encourage you um to um to not quit so good thank you so much for your time so anyone watching this who wants to kind of follow you see what you do or even connect with you for work where can they reach out and find you I am on uh, Instagram and Facebook at Tech with Tasha, and you can also email me at uh, Tasha at Tech Awesome. And I'll put that down in the description below the video. Thank you so much, Tasha, for this time. This is fantastic. All right, guys. Hope you enjoy the video. Bye.